In December 2013, the CAFE TA Center invited people in recovery to share their insights and experiences. These are their recovery stories. I think the way treatment needs to come is that the person with mental illness needs to be able to be heard. Physicians and patients cooperating to determine what kind of treatment is being used and physicians paying a lot of attention to what patients are saying about how they're feeling and how their symptoms are. You're going to have to retrain a lot of psychiatrists. <laughs> and a lot of the people in the mental health field in order to get the, the, the people that are treating people with mental illness to use the recovery model. People heal a lot faster when they work on their strengths rather than concentrating on the illness because when you concentrate on what's bad or or the pain it exaggerates it so that it's your entire world the professionals and all need more education by peers I believe, and this is just my opinion, I, I believe that our psychiatrists and our, our other clinicians need to work more closely with uh, the consumers. Have a doctor that you can talk to and that will talk to you. And that's, that's taking control. Because if you have a doctor uh, that you can't talk to and they just want to write prescriptions and you can't ask questions, then you need to look for a new doctor. I think the most important thing about being in recovery is to look across the person that's treating you and to say, do you know how I feel? And that person says yes, because it's a peer-to-peer -peer model that works for those people who treat us or treat people in mental health to know what you go through. It's so hard to look across the table and say, you know, I've been through this today. Do you know what I, I've been through? And that person gives you that blank look. Medicine is not the only thing that's going to help, that, that helps you in recovery. You know, you, it, takes, it, it takes more than just, you know, medical. You know, you have to have peer support. They tell you that you'll never be better, you'll never be this. No, you know, peers, when we talk to each other, we know we can get better. If, if one made it through, you know two can make it through. Medication isn't always the solution. A lot of people think that medication solves everything. Oh, you have a headache, go take an aspirin. Oh, you have, um, you have anything else, like go take a pill, but not all of it is that. A lot of it could be getting um, therapy or just like having someone to talk to and be able to reach out to. Peer support is, is one thing that, that works because you take the time, that's the first thing you do is you listen. To, to the person, our equal, that we do not judge, that we support, we support whatever they want to do in life. It's made such a tremendous difference when we're able to talk to one another uh, about recovery. Just to be able to have somebody walk alongside of you. I think it needs to be more peer support and also look at different approaches, not just medication, but the holistic approach to recovery. The doctor, the caseworker, the peer specialist, all need to work in conjunction with the, with the client. That's got a lot to do with it, both of them working together. Because you can't do the recovery model thing and then recovery with the psychiatrist. They've all got to agree and work together. Some clinicians who were more so, in my mind, prescription writers. I go in and I'm trying to get a handle on this new thing that is happening in my life and I want to make sure my diet is right. Um, will I have to take this medicine for the rest of my life? Uh, I want some feedback. And a lot of times you run into clinicians who are just prescription writers. I listen to my doctor, don't get me wrong. I do what they tell me to do, but to a certain extent, I know my body better than they do. 
I've only been doing this a year and a half, and I've lost in the last year and a half three clients. And for each one of them, the medication, they're all in their mid 50s, just started destroying their bodies. And it doesn't have to be that way. I know that there is resistance from what I've read from the medical community and others saying, oh, I didn't know that you could cover, you could do well or whatever. So, so to uh, open up themselves to the possibilities that just about every problem and every obstacle uh, can and should be worked with and in many cases even overcome. My background is, it currently is, um, I have a master's in psych nursing. So I think for me, when I became involved in the recovery work, um, after I had my own issues, I think that it's changed me. I like to tell people to respect what people are saying that this has been their experience and that experience needs, needs to be valued as much or even more so as much as anyone else who might see themselves as a mental health clinician. I get that now. I get it more than I ever got it and I'm and I'm not anti mental health professionals. I am one but my personal experience has altered my way of thinking and it's actually added value to how I do the work that I do. One of the issues is the uh, entanglement of the pharmaceutical industry uh, with uh, mental health and that uh, grants are often, you know, with, when you need to do research and stuff, well, there's money for pharmaceuticals in many cases, but there isn't if there's not a lot of profit motive. Now, I'm not putting down pharmaceuticals, I'm just saying, in life, business is business. And for recovery models and non-medical models and non-pharmaceutical models, how do we get more funding for non-pharmaceutical, non-medical model-based methods? That's a public health crisis. And it's been an uphill battle that Congress, got that, that Congress should be concerned about. Unfortunately, it seems to me as though um, for a lot of people, if it's not measurable, it doesn't exist. So if they can see that it's successful and that um, people are getting better with this model as opposed to a medical model, um, I mean, it's more cost effective. It's, it's, uh, it's helping people's lives uh, in a larger way than just shuttle them in and out of community mental health centers just to, to get medication without uh, looking at the big picture. I, I think it's just getting that information out there to the right people and in the right places. The, the problem is that you can, uh, you can understand this problem in 10,000 different ways. And if this is going to happen, you know, it completely shifts the whole thinking about the mind. But I don't know if the culture of the society is ready for that. I don't know. For more information, visit Cafe TA Center dot net.